To God in the highest and on earth peace goodwill to all men welcome ladies and gentlemen to cleansing fire Christmas edition and it is such a joy and a pleasure to have you worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on this day so let's worship and let's come back and hear from his throne around sparkling light pretty all over time so many busy people who don't have time to spare I wonder if they know or if they really care I don't see the bright no, 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 no Christmas cheer All in desperation Of tender love and care So don't let this moment Don't you dear let it pass you by Give it all you got Come on and give love a try Cause the reason for the season came wrapped up in love the reason for the season took time to come from above he made the way so clear so that all men might see the reason for the season is the love he gave for you you and me Somebody out there They need just one smile To brighten their day To make it all oh, oh, worthwhile Open up your heart And let Christmas light come in And then you know the reason Then your heart will see Came wrapped up in love The reason we have this season He took time to come from above He made the way so clear So that all of us would see The reason for the season is the love That Jesus gave for you and me Yeah! He took time to come from above He made the way so clear So that all of us would see That the reason for the season The reason for the season The reason for the season Is the love that Jesus gave for you and me I'm so glad about it, hey. Mm. You see, he came from above and he gave his love for you and me. You, 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 you and me. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We bow. And we give obeisance and homage to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Just like those who witnessed him, those who were told about him, came and worshipped. So too, down through the eons 
ends of time we choose to worship the King, the King who has given his life for us. And Father, as we take this time and we think about you, we draw from the revelation of this holy and spiritual time. God, we embrace your Son. We embrace you. Holy Spirit, come and hover. Father, whatever we are in. Not everybody is rejoicing. Not everybody is in the same position. But oh God, your word can reach. Oh God, the message of this time is for just that situation. Let the download of heaven touch them right where they are. Encourage them. Lift them up in this time as we can cleansing fire do what we do best lift up the one who we celebrate at this time Jesus Christ the Lord let's dive straight into the word of God I want to talk to you briefly so you can be with your family take that time so your family can listen and hear what God has for them I want to talk to you about man's response to God's agenda man's response to God's agenda. The events surrounding Jesus's birth was deeply spiritual. I know it has been commercialized and deterred with other messages, but the real story and the real events that surrounded Jesus's birth was deeply spiritual where the divine citizenry of heaven tangibly connected and engaged on the earth. It was a time of powerful divine encounter to many individuals. The heavenlies were busy as the invisible realm and kingdom of God made things visible on the earth in preparation for his son who would make a visible appearance. Everyone who was involved had a direct and indirect encounter from God. We see Mary and Joseph and the shepherds all having powerful encounters with God. They all experienced him in some way, whether it were in dreams and visions and signs, in angelic visitation. All of these phenomenal and supernatural happenings, we see each one of them displaying different responses as God included them in his plan. God continues to speak through various means to his people, allowing them to participate in what he is doing. Till this day, God continues to speak to us because he wants us to be included. He wants us to be a part of what he is doing in the earth. The Bible says many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the purpose of God that prevails. So we look at the response that mortal man gave to a very divine plan, to a very amazing agenda that God set out for them. Many of them were not aware they were a part of this plan. You may be sitting where you are today and you think life is what you see and what you have experienced. But my word to you today, God's word through me today, is that you, my friend, you are part and parcel of God's agenda on the earth. It may not look like it. 
It may not feel like it, but that is what it is about. Let's look at Joseph. Each one of these individuals that I'm going to mention were in very human circumstances, thinking in the way that you and I think. Joseph's initial response was concerned. You see, a Jewish betrothal was a binding agreement for marriage. So once you were betrothed, you were already married. And according to the custom of the day, there were two stages for the couple to go through in that marital process. First came the betrothal, which is kiddushin. And it was where the two families will sit and write a mar marriage contract and arrangements would be made by the parents. And the only way it could be broken was through divorce. If anything in the contract was not kept. And then that was followed by a second step where considerably later, maybe a year later, uh, it, they, then they will include a marriage feast uh, after which the groom would take the wife to his home. And the drama of the text that we see uh, concerning Joseph uh, takes place between these two events. Uh, he signed the contract. Uh, everything was fixed. Uh, Mary was his wife. Uh, he went and he prepared and he built a place to take her back. Uh, and on his return, the Bible says he found Mary pregnant. He found her in that state and the jeopardy took place in this second stage. You see, immediately he made a plan because the contract as far as he was concerned was not kept. But the, then Joseph, her husband, the Bible says, being a just man and not wanting to make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. His initial response to what he saw and what he came upon, what he found on his return was guarded and instructed by his own righteousness, by what he knew of the law, by what he understood of his religion. Are you responding to God out of your own self-righteousness, out of your own opinions and justifications? The Bible says he sought his own righteousness. And Romans 10.3 said, for being ignorant of the righteousness of God, and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Your righteousness has imperfections. Your righteousness has loopholes. Your righteousness or your trying to be righteous, trying to think right and live right on your own strength, you are going to fail. And this was the righteousness of a religion that said if the law was not kept, the contract wasn't kept, that this the, the person who you were to marry should die, should be stoned to death, should be put away, should be an outcast. And this was the result of man's righteousness. Matthew 23, 1 says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and the disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Moses was a powerful mouthpiece for God. And the scribes and the Pharisees sit there and they say they practice and observe he's got Jesus is telling them practice and observe whatever they tell you but do not do what they do for they preach but they don't practice self-righteousness causes you to speak to others judge others look down on others put others in confinement put yourself in bondage and yet you are not pleasing 
God. Isaiah 64, 6, but we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness is as filthy rags. So the first response to what Joseph saw, my God, was in his flesh, in his mind. He was trying to work out this thing in his own moral self, which was not guided by the Holy Spirit, but guided by a list of rules and regulations. And then we see an angel visits him in a dream and puts his fears to rest. When God comes in, your righteousness is thrown out of the window because when God comes in, you are exposed to something that is complete. You are exposed to something that is perfect. Ah, he put his fears to rest and he said after he considered it, he went to sleep and had a dream and Joseph son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. When you have a divine response from God in the midst of a difficult and complicated situation, God will put your fears to rest. He will confirm your part in his plan. He said, Joseph, thou son of David. You see, Jesus had to be born of the lineage of David. Joseph was chosen to be the earthly guide and role model, an example for the Son of God. He had an integral part to play in the life of Jesus. He said she will give birth to a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. God had to get involved where Joseph was because as the leader of his home, as the priest of his home, as the image of that household. It was the father that would name the child. In Jewish custom, the father names the child. So he ensured that Joseph had all the necessary information. Listen to me. We cannot walk with our own righteousness. We've got to see the righteousness of God which will confirm his plan in our life and which will change our mind. When Joseph woke up he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary as his wife. Joseph's response turned from self-righteousness and concern to obedience to the will of God. What are you facing? What are you trying to do? What image are you trying to project? And it is failing on every side. Are you concerned about what you're seeing? But within yourself, you don't have the answer. I dare you to come to God. I dare you to ask him. I dare you to connect with him. He will answer every question. And he will show you the details of the plan and your importance in doing what you need to do. Ah, Joseph was not a standalone father. He was not on the outside looking in, but God chose him just as he chose every other individual. And it was integral and important that he bowed to the will of God. Are you struggling with religion? Are you struggling? Ah, because it, the will of God and to obey the will of God seems hard. But I want you to know in this season that your response, it can be to stand in the perfect 
perfect will of God. Just obey God. He's worked out the situation. He has everything planned. And he is waiting for your covering, your contribution, your inclusion in his agenda. Your obedience. Somebody shout, I bow to your obedience, God. The second response we see is from Mary. Her initial response, everybody involved had an initial response and a final response. When you are connecting in the spirit, your mind, your senses, your body will always fight against the spirit, against what God wants to do. So there will always be an initial reaction. What was in Mary's initial reaction and her response? It was confusion. You see, the angel of the Lord, he, she walked in, and the angel of the Lord did not look like an angel with wings. He did not look uh, very celestial. The Bible says she walked in the room, and she saw a man, and the man greeted her. So there was no need for her to be startled. This was looking like another human being. But what confused her, what made her troubled, was the angel of the Lord's greeting. Because the greeting that he greeted her with did not match her present status. She was grappling with mistaken identity. Luke 1, 29, and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. She wasn't afraid of him. She was troubled at what she, he, she was hearing and cast in her mind what manner of salutation should this be. The angel spoke to who she was in God's eyes and not who she was in her own eyes. God, when he steps in to include you in his agenda, he will address your true identity and not the one you are trying to form, not the one you are struggling with, not the one that the world tells you you are, not the identity and the title that culture and forefathers have named you, not the circumstance that you are standing in, but God will address you with what he knows about you and what God knows about you is the end, is the finished product. Ah, who you are, working at it, processing in his midst. He's not seeing that. Because of the perfect work of Jesus, God sees us complete. God sees us whole. We are complete in him. So he's going to address the person of destiny, the person who's standing in their potential, the person ah, who he is using for his honor and, in, and his glory. He address Gideon who felt fearful and insignificant and lower than low. He was taught that he was the last of his rank. Ah, his family was the last of his rank. They were irrelevant, but God found him and they were so irrelevant he was hiding. He was down in a well, down in a cave, down in a place where no one can see him. But he here the angel of the Lord comes and says, Gideon, oh mighty man of valor. He didn't see him as a fearful individual. He didn't see him as the lowest in his rank and file. He saw him as he has been created in heaven on the earth. When God created you, there were no bounds. There were no limits. There were was nothing to hold you back. You were the image of God and God will deal with you according 
according to his finished work and not according to your work in progress. Colossians 2.10 says, and in him you have been made complete and he is the head over all rule and authority. Galatians 3.26 says, For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. He will speak according to your future and not your present. Ezekiel 36.26, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. And I will put within you, I will remove the heart of stone and turn it into to the heart of flesh her responded her response when she heard and she got over the initial trouble my god she found out what that greeting meant if you spend time in the presence of the lord if you connect to the spirit of God, long enough, you will understand that every word coming forth, it is, it is uniformed. It is aligned to the assignment. By the time the angel was finished with all the details, my God, Mary's response to the agenda of God, it moved from confusion and it turned into surrender to the will of God when all was explained. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her surrender to God's will. It brings you into agreement with God. She saw herself as God saw her. Surrender to God makes you completely available to him. He said the Holy Ghost will come upon you and overshadow you. The moment she accepted and surrendered the word that was spoken, the Holy Spirit went to work. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. We are involved in something greater than worldly affairs. We are involved in something more powerful than what you see happening on the earth. We are involved in the agenda of God. And the minute we surrender, the minute we give in, the minute we open ourselves up and make ourselves available, ah, my God, the plan of God will kick in in our lives. Rev, I haven't seen anything moving. I haven't seen no progression. That's because you refuse to hear God, hear the details, and you refuse to make yourself available to his agenda, to his plan. God is waiting on your surrender. God is waiting on you giving him your all. The minute you do it, he's going to push the plan forward. For as you make yourself available, you will see the finished work of God. Struggle will stop the minute surrender steps in. Trepidation will stop. Confusion will stop. Clarity will come when we surrender. It's time to respond to God as we surrender. The songwriter says, all to Jesus, not some to Jesus, all to Jesus, I surrender, all to him I freely give. She gave her body, she gave her body as an instrument, as a temple of the living God. What do you have to surrender to God that he's ready to use to bring forth his truth and his power on the earth? Somebody shout, I surrender in Jesus' name. And finally, we have the shepherd's response. We're talking about man's response. Placed in difficult, complicated positions, 
but coming out with a response that God can work with. When God connects to, with you, can he work with you? The initial response to the, for, the, for the shepherds who were watching their sheep was one of fear. Luke 2, 9 says, Just then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Whenever God reveals himself to people in scripture, they were afraid. The fear is a disorient, disorienting experience. I know you want to hear from God. I know you want a visitation, but it's very disorienting. The recognition one has in sensing that he or she is not in charge. It's a sort of panic that takes you over because you know that you are in the presence of something bigger and someone greater than you. It is being gripped by a deep awe that makes you want to simultaneously get closer but run away. That's how awesome God is. One is simply dumbfounded at the absolute otherness of this stranger. He does not reveal himself to scare us. When angels show up, they have to calm the listeners down and assure them that they're coming with good news. Each time we're, he we're hearing the words, fear not, fear not. And that's just the natural reaction to things that are angelic. Abram, Moses, Joshua, David. Ah, when they got over the over the fair, they, they simply fell down in worship as they had visions of God's majesty. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Lord is holy understanding. Blessed is the man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in his commands. Their response turned from fear to witness. When they heard and they were calm down, and I'm telling you, calm yourself down. Too many things have you anxious. Too many things have you in uncertainty. Too many things are spooking you out. But God is saying, fear not. Fear not. No matter what you see, fear not. And I want you to hear why you must not fear. Because there is an assignment for you to fulfill. There is a vision that you need to have. There is something bigger than you that you need to accomplish right here and right now. He told them, I need you to respond because you are included in this phenomenal event because I need you to be a witness. Luke 2 17 and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the, the, the child. Isaiah 43 10 says you are my witnesses says the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand understand that I am he. Acts 1 8 but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. God wants to give you a front row seat in what he is doing, in what he's about to reveal and open up. It's a great thing. It's an exciting thing. It's get over your fear because it's good news in the making and you want to be a part of what God is doing. I don't know about you, but I love the song that says, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. I want a front row seat. I want to be a witness. I want to have a first-hand view of what you are about to do and what you're doing. 
I can't sit in the dark anymore. I can't do business as usual anymore. My occupation and my career and my family cannot pull me away because what God has created me for, he wants me to witness it. I can't die now. I cannot be destroyed now. I cannot waste away now because I have been called to be a witness. You have been called to see it for yourself. You've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Stop going around in a circle. Stop listening to what man is saying. You are involved in something greater. You are involved in something this world cannot comprehend. You are involved in the sure agenda of God and you are included. So God says, be a witness. Not only did their response turn from fear to being a witness, it turned to being true worshipers of God. Luke 2, 20, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Whatever God has told you, honey, he's going to make sure you see it. He's going to make sure you witness it. He told them exactly where the babe was, who they were looking for. He gave them exact detail. God, will I declare to you, you're about to get exact detail and to just to be a witness because when they witnessed Jesus something happened in that connection get close to where Jesus is and when you leave my God you won't be able to keep it to yourself you've got to rejoice you've got to worship you've got to know that he is the center of your joy and what you experience you will want everybody to experience it. The Psalm 71 says, my mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Instead of complaining, instead of being harassed and speaking negative, fill your mouth with the worship and the praise, declaring the splendor of God. Isaiah 25, one Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you have done wonderful things that was planned long ago. You will know that God has already done it. You will know that you are just a part of a bigger picture. What will be your response to God when the reality of who you are and what, you has, have, what he has placed you here for divinely confronts you? And in these next few days, that divine challenge is going to come to you. I speak it into your life. What will be your response? Fear, self-righteousness, trouble, confusion, concern. But will you obey? Will you surrender to what he's showing you? Will you be a witness? Heaven's angel. Heaven's angels and heaven's agenda is being fulfilled one more time in the earth. And we are all part of this manifestation. We will respond and be a part of the transformation. Or will we be left religious, incomplete, or fearful? God is calling you, wooing you, wanting to give you all of the answers to your question, give you the details, show you why he has chosen you. Will you turn your back? Will you allow the world system to influence you more than something that has already been established and written out. That already has an ending where you win. Where you are victorious. 
where you are the head and not the tail. Surrender today. Give all of yourself today. Obey his powerful will. Become a worshiper and a witness as God includes you in his agenda today. Father, as we feel your presence and as we receive this download from heaven, it's not just a Christmas story, but you're revealing so much more, so much more of what went on in the spirit through divine connection. And we cry out today, as you're waiting to connect with us, as heaven begins to touch earth one more time and include every man in the manifestation of your coming again, of these last and closing days, as you included Noah and you told him your heart, as you included Moses and he understood your desire, as you worked with those of old, as when even when Jesus walked the earth and the, when he left the Holy Spirit, ah, ministered and spoke to the apostles and the, the, the people and the followers, God is so too. We connect with you. Let angels come in and have conversations with us. Ah, may we see signs and wonders knowing that you're confirming your word in our lives. May we have dreams where we can rest and all our fears can be put to rest. God, may you show up in glorious fashion where we will experience your awe and your majesty. And like Isaiah, we will declare that we are a, a people of unclean lips and dwelling among the unclean. But God, you will choose us anyway. You will mold us, you will make us, and you will lift us up. Father, those in difficult circumstances, those who are grappling with complications, I declare the clarity of heaven to come into your atmosphere, to break every chain and every yoke, and Father, to confirm and embrace every individual as part of your agenda and your plan and your manifestation on the earth as they receive this word. I declare, let earth receive her king. We receive you, king of glory. We receive you, God almighty. We receive you, savior of the world. We receive you, balm of Gilead. We receive you, Emmanuel. And we give you praise. Lift up your hands. Give God the praise as he is including and embracing you and lifting you up and encouraging you this day that you are part. Respond to him in worship. Respond to him with glory. As Lord, we give you praise. Bless your people. Supply your people. And make this a Christmas to remember in our families, in our homes, and in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. What a glorious word for this Christmas season. And we want you to know that if this ministry is being a blessing to you, we, and you want to partner with us, uh, we're making all our forums available. In Trinidad, there is a forum called NCASH. It is an online forum that you can join with us and be a partner with us as we touch the world in every way that God makes possible for us. And on behalf of my husband, Herman, and myself, all of Eden Life International, we wish you a glorious, a blessed, and a life-changing Merry Christmas. God bless you from our house to yours. Enjoy as we see you again for the new year. This uh, in January 
first. We're coming together, we're having communion, and we are going to hear the direction and the instruction of God in for this new year that we can walk in surrender, walk in power, and walk in glory. So we love you. We care about you. I am your senior pastor, Reverend Nicole Balasing Holder. Merry, Merry Christmas, and God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.